Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International with Samar Ajawi. A number of heads and members of Arab parliaments and representatives of organizations concerned with education unanimously agreed that the Bahrain National Charter Monument is a historical landmark that chronicles a democratic experience worthy of appreciation on the Arab and international levels. This came during a visit by the heads and members of councils and parliaments in the Arab countries to the National Charter Monument as well as the Comprehensive School of Her Highness, Sheikh Moza bint Hamad Al Khalifa, accompanied by the Minister of Education, Dr. Majid bin Ali Al Naimi. The visitors praised the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, which has elevated the Kingdom of Bahrain to an unprecedented growth and prosperity in all fields. With the support and backing of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. This comes on the sidelines of their visit to the Kingdom of Bahrain to attend the conference launching the Education Development Document in the Arab World, which was organized by the Arab Parliament in cooperation with the Ministry of Education under the patronage of the Deputy Prime Minister and Chairman of the Supreme Council for the Development of Education and Training, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdul Latif Rashid Azayani, participated in the reception hosted by the Italian Embassy at the Sofitel Hotel in Zalak on the occasion of the National Day of the Italian Republic in the presence of a number of senior officials and diplomats accredited in the Kingdom. In a speech delivered on the occasion, the Minister of Foreign Affairs expressed his best wishes to the Italian government and people on the occasion of its 76th National Day coinciding with the golden jubilee of the establishment of diplomatic relations between the two countries, stressing his happiness and the keenness of the Kingdom of Bahrain under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa to consolidate the bonds of cooperation, partnership and close deep friendship between the two countries. He added that the Bahraini-Italian relations gained a qualitative historical leap with the official visit of His Majesty the King to Rome in 2008, which witnessed the signing of several agreements and memoranda of understanding, and the friendly ties continued by conducting 17 official visits, reaching their highest level with the visit of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to Rome in February 2020, and the inauguration of the Bahraini Embassy headquarters, to complement the Italian Embassy's continuous role in Manama since 2002. The Minister of Foreign Affairs expressed his aspiration and confidence in achieving more achievements in terms of the strategic partnership between the two countries, building on the strong ties that have been achieved in various political, economic, cultural and social fields, and the fruitful cooperation in combating the coronavirus pandemic, among others, wishing the Italian Republic and its friendly people continued progress and prosperity. For her part, the Italian Ambassador to the Kingdom of Bahrain, Paola Amadi, expressed her thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister and the Minister of Foreign Affairs for their interest in strengthening political and economic cooperation and friendship between the two countries and the qualitative developments they are witnessing with the opening of the Kingdom of its Embassy in Rome, direct flights to Milan and Rome and other positive developments coinciding with the celebration of the Golden Jubilee of the establishment of diplomatic relations, wishing the Kingdom and its people further progress and prosperity. The Kingdom of Bahrain, represented by the Information and E-Government Authority, was honored for the Bahrain Digital Policies Project by the International Telecommunication Union in Geneva during the World Summit on the Information Society Forum. On this occasion, the Chief Executive Officer of the Information and E-Government Authority, Muhammad Ali Al-Qaid, extended his congratulations to His Majesty the King and to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister for the selection of Bahrain's Digital Policies Project as one of the pioneering projects during the summit. He affirmed that the directives of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to accelerate digital transformation processes and strive to enhance digital culture and build a digital society and thought contributed to the speed of the Kingdom's move towards launching digital policies. He also explained that such an award is added to a series of achievements for the Information and E-Government Authority that comes within the interest of the Minister of Interior Lieutenant General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa and his constant follow-up of all the efforts made by the authority to implement the government's directives.
Al-Qaeda stated that these policies include a set of procedures that contribute to regulating the digital transformation processes in various government agencies, as well as aiming to create the organizational foundations for providing electronic services, facilitating their use and supporting creativity in digital fields. The Kingdom of Bahrain welcomed the announcement by the Special Envoy of the Secretary General of the United Nations to Yemen, Hans Grondenberg, to extend the truce in Yemen for two additional months in accordance with the terms of the basic agreement that entered into force on the 2nd of April. The Foreign Ministry appreciated the efforts of Envoy Grondenberg and the response of the leadership of the Arab coalition to support legitimacy and the Yemeni parties with his efforts to extend the ceasefire which comes in the context of the initiative announced by the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia in March 2021 to end the Yemeni crisis through a comprehensive peace settlement. The ministry expressed hope that this initiative would contribute to ending the war and supporting a comprehensive and sustainable political solution to the Yemeni crisis in order to achieve security, stability and peace throughout Yemen and meet the aspirations of its people for development and prosperity. The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia has launched an electronic visa processing app for pilgrims planning to perform Umrah. The Minister of Hajj Tawfiq bin Fawzan al Rabia said the visa will be issued within 24 hours of applying. He also said that the visa's validity has been extended from one month to three months, adding that the pilgrims who visit the Kingdom to perform Umrah can visit other Saudi cities without any restraints. The app also allows pilgrims to find accommodation and arrange transportation. In regards to Saudi Arabia's decision, to allow one million pilgrims to perform Hajj this year. The minister said the kingdom is keen on protecting pilgrims from COVID-19 and on guaranteeing the best quality of services. The United States welcomed the extension of a two-month ceasefire in Yemen and reaffirmed its support for efforts that aim to reach a permanent solution to the crisis in Yemen. U.S. President Joe Biden in a statement said that he welcomed the announcement of the continuation of the truce in Yemen conflict and called on all parties to work towards achieving a comprehensive and inclusive peace process. He also praised the cooperative diplomacy from across the region that made the truce possible. He said Saudi Arabia demonstrated courageous leadership by taking initiatives early on to endorse and implement terms of the UN-led ceasefire. Biden also highlighted Oman's significant role in hosting and facilitating dialogue, as well as Egypt and Jordan's moves of opening their airports to flights from Yemen over the last month. In Yemen, meanwhile, 19 civilians were recently killed, mostly by landmines or improvised explosive devices or unexploded ordnance. The UN High Commissioner for Human Rights said the toll recorded between April the 2nd and June the 1st underscores the threat these devices pose to civilians, often over long periods of time causing death or serious injuries, with children especially at risk. Saudi Arabia has taken significant efforts since 2018 to clear 329,000 landmines by the Saudi Arabia-based King Salman Humanitarian Aid and Relief Center. Egypt's President Abdel Fattah Sisi met with the European Commissioner for Neighborhood and Enlargement, Olivier Varhelli, the presidency said the meeting reviewed various aspects of the relationship between Egypt and the EU, whether with regard to its political, economic and development dimensions. It expressed satisfaction over the overall developments in institutional cooperation between the two sides. The meeting also dealt with the crises in Libya, Ukraine, Palestine and Ethiopia's Renaissance Dam and relations between Cairo and the European Union.